Hi everyone, you're watching Halbon Flash videos and right now we're in conversation with Tenet. So Gareth, first of all, welcome to this conversation with us and tell us a little bit about yourself and your story. Thank you very much. Great to be here. I'm the DeFi architect at Tenet. I've been in the space since 2013. Uh, started off as an investor, um, started angel investing back in 2016, got involved in early DeFi with MakerDAO and other projects back in 2017. So been around the space a little while, co-founded Owl Ventures after that, and uh, now joined the Tenet team as their DeFi architect to help them bring uh, new products to the LS DeFi space. Amazing. So you've actually been around the space for quite a long while across different projects. It's always fantastic to see. So tell us a bit more about Tenet and what you're building out there. Yeah, absolutely. So Tenet is a L1 network for restaking your LSDs uh, to our validators, which secures the network, allows you to participate in governance. And for doing so, you earn block rewards uh, in the form of Tenet from our gauge system. And you also get a liquid representation of your restaked position, a tenant LSD, which you can then use across our native LSD5 products or bridge it back using a tenant bridge to other networks with layer zero endpoints and utilize it across the DeFi space. One of the most important being you can use it as collateral for our over collateralized stable coin, LSDC which we'll be launching at the same time as well. And then LSDC, again, will be an omnichain fungible token uh, that you can use across DeFi whilst maintaining the exposure to your yield-bearing assets as collateral. So you do seem to be on a mission to unlock the liquidity and potential of LSDs. Uh, tell us a bit more about it. And also for those of us who are less aware, what are LSDs per se and how are you working the entire ecosystem around this with uh, Tenet? Proof of stake's been around for a long time now, since the Peercoin days. Then you've seen Ethereum has moved from proof of work to proof of stake. And that's a consensus layer that means users are staking their uh, native gas tokens to secure the network and validate blocks. But obviously, a lot of users can't afford to either have the minimum amount they need to be a validator or to lock up their liquidity for that period of time and that's why we've seen a huge rise in lsds where lsd issuers like lido stata anchor etc uh, they will do the validation for you they'll do all of the overhead on that side uh, they'll gather a minimum amount and you can uh, stake any amount with an lsd issuer and you'll get an lsd uh, which is a liquid staking derivative which you can then maintain your liquidity whilst getting the rewards uh, from the networks that you're securing. Um, and then, so these LSDs, they've become incredibly popular. Uh, the TVL in them is in the tens of billions. Um, whereas for the actual utilization, it's still very low in the hundreds of millions, which is really disappointing, actually, because I, I think these assets have a lot of promise in terms of being a yield bearing asset that could be utilized across DeFi in place of native assets. So anything that's using ETH at the moment could be using an LSD instead. And so what we're doing with Tenet is we're bringing additional yield to this LSDs by restaking and securing the Tenet network, which in turn gives them utility in itself. And then we're expanding that utility by allowing them to mint a stable coin and by creating these OFT versions of the Tenet LSDs, which can then be utilized across different DeFi protocols in the space. Very, very interesting, actually. So we learned a little bit more about LSD uh, from you right away. Thank you for that. What is LSD Phi all about? So LSD Phi is the combination of LSDs with DeFi. So we, we've seen a lot of DeFi protocols being introduced over the years from CDP-based stable coins like Maker and DAI to lending platforms like Aave, Compound, et cetera. Now you've got more complicated uh, DeFi products. So options protocols, derivatives platforms, um, decentralized leverage trading, et cetera. Uh, and it ever continues to expand. But LS DeFi is combining all of those DeFi products with LSDs so that users are actually earning yield on the assets that they're depositing into the DeFi protocols. And that actually unlocks some new opportunities where, because you're earning interest on the underlying product, 
it can make strategies that previously wouldn't have been profitable be worthwhile implementing on the DeFi side. So for instance, you no longer need to charge an interest rate to take a loan out against it and mint stablecoin because you're actually earning on the underlying assets from the protocol side and they can charge a take rate on that instead of taking away from a user's assets. Uh, so it becomes more capital efficient and also allows the users to earn more yield. Fantastic. Um, that actually explained the concept quite well. You alluded a little bit about the LSDC token. So tell us a bit more about the tokenomics and what you're building around that. Yeah, absolutely. So LSDC will take all of these different tenant LSDs uh, that get restaked to the network. Um, so we'll be accepting not just Ethereum-based ones like ST, Rocket Pool, Leaf, CB, et cetera, but also uh, from other networks, so Matic X, uh, Anchor BNB, uh, even networks that didn't have LSDs before, we'll be helping them through a partnership with Anchor to get LSDs for the first time and be able to restake them to Tenet. And so you take that collateral and you deposit it into a clip, uh, which is our version of a CDP. Um, and then against your collateral, you can mint the stablecoin LSDC. Uh, LSDC is a OFT. Um, so it works with layer zero technology. It will integrate directly into our bridge and you can use it as you use any other stable coin today um, across the DeFi space. So we'll be having some incentivized liquidity on mainnet Ethereum and we'll be working with protocols to integrate LSDC into DeFi protocols. That sounds very exciting. Definitely looking forward to all the updates coming up. Uh, so with Halbon, we're talking security, of, of course. So what is your internal security strategy and why go with an external partnership with Halbon? Yeah, absolutely. So I, I think from the get-go, we've been very cautious with releasing any products without having proper auditing and uh, testing periods, both internally and public. So that's kind of the first part of our strategy. And that's why we wanted to work with Holborn and we have the security as a service package. So all of our code base will be thoroughly audited uh, before release. But in addition to that, we'll be doing our internal tests, which are ongoing on all of our suite of products at the moment. And then as people have seen, we've gradually been releasing that to public test nets. So we have the bridge on the public test net now. Also LSDC is already there. And then only once we've tested it, we've audited it, and uh, we have a clean report and we've fixed any bugs that come up from the testing, would we then be pushing that to the mainnet? But security doesn't stop there either. Obviously, like we've seen a lot of kind of hacks, exploits, uh, particularly on uh, things like lending markets, et cetera. And, and although it's not a lending market, uh, a CDP-based stablecoin does work in a similar manner. We want to make sure that we're taking security serious on an ongoing basis. And we're actually building out a really interesting solution with our security advisor, whereby we'll be taking a series of proofs from other networks on the state of the LSDs that we're accepting as collateral. So we'll be using ZK proofs with a light client solution so that actually we're confirming on an ongoing basis that certain aspects of these tokens are true. So for instance, if we saw a huge spike or decline in price that could be indicative of a flash loan from a Oracle feed, or if we saw that the total supply of the token increased unexpectedly, um, then the proof would come back negative. And at that point, we'd be able to automatically freeze its usage in different aspects of our product. So the restaking, unstaking, minting the stable coin, redeeming the stable coin, et cetera. Uh, and then we pass it through to governance to re-enable it, where you would need to go through a governance process and either re-enable it or take remedial actions to fix based on whatever had happened to that product. So that's really interesting to us. And I, I don't think anybody has built out a similar solution to date on the kind of automated ongoing security side. So th this is really exciting to me. And then we've obviously got the other aspect of it, which is more human. And that, that's the governance and risk side. Uh, we're actually in the process of onboarding and building out a team that will guide us on the governance of Tenet as a protocol, as well as the uh, products that we're building on top of it, like LSDC. 
Uh, and so it will be up to the governance and risk team to then make sure that proper procedures are being followed for updates, that we're properly onboarding new types of collateral to the stable coin, setting appropriate limits for borrowing, uh, which will take into account not just things like their market cap and the amount that's staked to tenant, but also liquidity is a huge problem. If you've got a multi-million dollar position that needs to be liquidated and only a few hundred thousand in liquidity, then that becomes a risk to your system. There's something we're seeing at the moment with Curve, for instance, that you've got tens of millions of dollars in Curve that could be liquidated into a liquidity pool that just can't support that. Um, so it's important to not allow positions like that to build up in the first place. Especially the new tool that you have in line on security sounds super, super interesting. We'd love to follow up and see how that um, ends up looking. Um, I, I definitely wanted to zoom in a bit on external partnerships such as ours um, and the ongoing work and how you came about those decisions. Um, it's super interesting to just look at the whole process of all the features that you consider from your perspective. Yeah, absolutely. I think what was really interesting for us is, is the kind of ongoing monthly service to be able, because we have a long roadmap, we have a lot of products that we're pushing out from the tenant side, and having somebody that's continually available to audit our work. And also, it's not just the auditing, but there's the ongoing checking the like native chain itself, et cetera, and all of the other security services that are provided that I think makes Holborn a really attractive offer for us compared to some of the auditors that were more a one-off fee um, and, and you don't have that kind of relationship where they already know your code base, they know what you're pushing out, they know how it links to your other products, et cetera. Uh, so I think it's important to look at it as an entire ecosystem and not just an individual audit process. And I personally think that will help to make sure that we're thinking about the right things when we're looking at whether or not the products are working and testing. So it's something that we've also taken into account in our internal tests to make sure things aren't just being tested in isolation, looked at in isolation, et cetera. Uh, you need to take the entire mechanism as a whole. So that's one thing that I, I think really set Holborn apart um on that front it's great to hear we definitely don't see security as a one-off process thank you so much gareth for joining in again and hopefully our audience enjoys this as much as i have thanks again thank you very much been really good to chat